Hello, it's Brick Bros UK, and we have the largest set from the Force Awakens wave, the Lego Star Wars The Force Awakens Millennium Falcon set 75105. It has an explosive box set graphic with the Falcon shooting lasers. It consists of 1,329 pieces and costs £129 and 99p in the UK, $149.99 in the US and €149.99 in Europe. Ok, let's go ahead and build the Millennium Falcon. The Millennium Falcon took us 2 hours and 15 minutes to build. You get 9 bags of Lego with a few smaller ones and we would say it's a complex and time consuming build, but well worth the final result. You get 6 minifigures and the BB-8 droid and of course the Millennium Falcon ship. Ok, let's see the minifigures up close. Tasu Leech is the leader of the Thug Gang Kanja Club. The minifigure has black and dark brown printed legs and a dark brown printed torso back and front, which looks good, with black arms. Tasu Leech also has a dual head with normal and angry battle face. Tasu Leech has a black long hair piece, the same piece used by Qui-Gon Jinn minifigures, and is equipped with a reddish brown flintlock pistol. But the set comes with two which is nice, but we feel a new designed blaster would have been cool, instead of the 18th century pirate weaponry. The Kanja Club gang member minifigure has dark brown legs with dark bluish grey printing from the torso and a grenade and ammo pouch. The torso has the dark bluish grey pattern printing front and back with a dark brown ammo belt printed on front and back with a pouch on the back. It also has dark brown arms. The gang member has one face with a huge black eye patch covering nearly half his face and he has a new black pirate hat. The gang member also is equipped with a reddish brown musket. The minifigure has more printing than Tasu Leech and has a good thug look. The Finn minifigure is one of the new heroes with black legs and a tanny orange torso jacket with cool printing front and back. Finn also has a dual head with normal and angry battle face and he has a black hair piece. Finn is also equipped with a medium black blaster which is nice to see instead of stud shooters and he's exclusive to this set in the first wave of the Force Awakens sets. Ray is a scavenger from the desert planet of Jakku which is shown on the box set graphic and we also mentioned this in the Ray speeder set review. The Ray minifigure is exactly the same figure as the Ray speeder set which is disappointing. It has the same printed dark tan cloth or robe legs that flow onto the light grey torso with the printed dark tan robe bits and belt. It's printed back and front. Ray also has the same dual head with normal and angry battle faces and the same dark brown tied up hair piece which the character has in the movie. The only difference is the Ray in the Millennium Falcon set comes with a silver small blaster and the new silver coloured blasters are unique for the new The Force Awakens sets and we are loving this. It's a shame the Ray minifigure didn't have a new printed face for the more expensive set. The BB-8 droid minifigure has a white body or ball lower piece with printed on orange and silver droid detail and the small white headpiece has the BB-8 orange and silver head printing which overall looks great and we think these two pieces are new to LEGO. The BB-8 droid minifigure is also available in the Pose X-Wing fighter set. The Han Solo minifigure is the new older version if that makes sense with black legs with printed on dark brown belt and holster. Han has a dark brown torso jacket with white shirt printing underneath which is great detail. Han has a dual head with older happy and older angry faces and Han Solo has a grey hair piece. Han Solo is also equipped with a small black blaster like always and the minifigure is exclusive to this set in the first wave of the Force Awakens sets. There's lots of fans I'm sure who'd love to add this Han to their Lego Star Wars minifigure collection. The Chewbacca minifigure is the same version in this year's Shuttle Tidarium set 75094 
with dark brown legs with printed on tan fur. Chewie also has a dark brown plain torso and dark brown head and body piece with coloured in silver bandolier back and front and moulded face with coloured in teeth, eyes and tan fur around the face which looks great. The best thing about the new Chewbacca minifigure is his unique new black bowcaster weapon. The moulding looks great with the round end pieces and it fires like a stud shooter where you load in the trans red round plate ammunition and press the dark bluish grey trigger piece and fire. You can then shoot Tasu Leech and knock him over. Sadly the Chewbacca minifigure isn't new or unique which will disappoint collectors but the new firing bowcaster makes up for this and is a great fun idea by LEGO. The Millennium Falcon looks great at 5 inches or 14 centimetres tall, 18 inches or 47 centimetres long and 12 inches or 32 centimetres wide. It has a new sleek design with a lot more plates, printed parts and sticker detail giving it a better look or more upgraded look than previous models. The front of the ship has the two triangular parts with lots of added grill bits and pieces for extra detail. Both can easily detach as they are made separately and connect to the ship thanks to three Technic pins so they also reattach easily. At the front there's two trans red light pieces representing the laser detail but it's the two hidden flick missiles that fire the real payload. These are activated by pushing the front hull and this launches the Red Flick Missile which is a fun added play feature. Here's the side detail of the ship. There's hinges on top of each section and added dark bluish grey, bricks, foam pieces and plate detail. At the back we have the trans blue engine thruster detail with a trans blue hollow pipe added in for this. We felt a light brick would really brighten things up but it still looks good. And on the other side there's more of the same bricks, plates and tiles. This brings us up nicely to the cockpit. The cockpit is made of three pieces that connect into one with the printed front dish window and top window with more unique printing that looks good. You can detach the cockpit window to access Finn and Ray inside. There's a control panel with sticker detail. It's a shame this wasn't printed. And as you can see there's space for two minifigures in the cockpit but it is a tight squeeze especially for Han and Chewie's tall head. The cockpit window clips on really easy for a quick getaway. The top area of the ship has lots of triangle plates that fold out to get to the inside. On this one there's a new rectangle sensor dish which is flexible moving on a ball joint and has an added sticker for detail. Other plates have tiles with extra sticker detail and at the back there's six dishes with stickers on each. And further round more detail with four detailed stickers added to the cockpit tunnel entrance which is a nice touch. There's a rotating turret on top and one directly underneath the ship. Both arc up and down for aim and there's a round viewing window sticker on top and a turret base sticker for extra detail. The top turret has a really cool opening up feature revealing a slide out sitting area where you can place two minifigures to control the top and bottom turrets. The bottom turret can be seen here on the underside of the ship and there's also four brick built landing gear legs. Now you've seen the Millennium Falcon's exterior, we can fold out the top plates and reveal the interior. This fold out open feature is a clever idea, making access to the inside easy and straightforward. Inside there's a lot more boxes and cables lying around, giving the Falcon a sort of untidy abandoned look, suggesting the Falcon has been abandoned for some time. At the front there's a large detailed black control panel sticker on the side next to Han's rotating chair which will please fans. 
Opposite is the iconic hollow chest playing area with tan seats and a lot of printed stickers. The hollow chest board is a printed tile which we were very happy with and now Chewbacca has new friends to play hollow chess with, like Finn here. Further around there's two tan beds where minifigures can rest. Finally at the back is the upgraded hyperdrive. There's a white storage compartment and lots of detailed stickers and purple rotating engine plates. You can bring in Han with the wrench accessory to try and fix the hyperdrive. The detailed stickers really help to make it come alive. There are two play features under the arches inside. On the left, there's the iconic secret compartment under the floor. Quickly pull up the red plate and chuck Han in to disappear. The secret compartment is a great play feature to recreate old and new Star Wars scenes. On the right is the second play feature, the Millennium Falcon's access ramp. Pushing it down from the inside allows access in and out of the ship from underneath, just like in the movie scenes. But sadly, this model sits low down, meaning minifigures like Han here will have to crawl in and out to use it. We do like the access ramp as it's part of the Millennium Falcon's charm, but it's a shame you can't walk figures up it from underneath the ship. Here's one final overview of the Millennium Falcon's interior. It has two really cool play features and the upgraded hyperdrive isn't bad and there's lots of sticker detail and the cool hollow chest seating area is great. The Lego Star Wars The Force Awakens Millennium Falcon set looks great with its sleek design and lots of added stickers and plates. We do feel more printed parts would have been nice but price wise it seemed reasonable because you get six minifigures and the BB-8 droid and the iconic Millennium Falcon. Poe's X-Wing fighter set is £70 with just two minifigures and BB-8. We love old Han Solo and exclusive Finn minifigures. It's a shame Chewie wasn't new but his new shooting bow caster is awesome. Also Ray could have had a new printed face for a new set. It was a long complex build but this was expected with the largest set from this wave of sets and we feel it has lots of cool play features like the access ramp, hidden compartment, flick missiles at the front, double rotating turrets with minifigure access and dual seater cockpit that is a bit tight. Brick Bros UK has given the set a brick rating of 5 bricks out of 5 and can see this being a top Christmas gift this year. Hope you enjoyed a Brick Bros UK unboxing and review of the Force Awakens Millennium Falcon set. Remember to check out our channel for more Lego The Force Awakens set reviews and like, comment and subscribe to Brick Bros UK.